to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Mrs. Jessica Jess Rushed Vibes Rushing herself. It's a full government. And this is dude. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. only dude, but that That dude. dude. David. Mr. David. Rushed Vibes Rushing. Rushed Vibes Rushing. Woo woo. Known within this house as Almighty Merciful. No. <laughs> ruler. <laughs> Our Lord. Literally. Rushing. No one in this. <laughs> Everybody calls me that. No one in this house. Everybody calls me that. Addresses you like that. We all kind of look at you like, bruh. You're outnumbered by women. So <laughs> I know. I need, a, you're, I, I need a gerbil or something. Say? You're going to get a male fish. No, so I'm going to get a um, ferret. No, you're not. Yeah, I'm going to get a ferret. Um, a ferret's not welcome in here. And then Salas can take it with her to school. And no, then when they're. The ferrets when, are not allowed in school. Pets, schools don't have pets anymore. Uh, didn't you see Kindergarten Cop? Kindergarten Cop came out in like 1990. But when the school is infiltrated by an angry (laughs) ex-husband who wants his son back and Solace has the ferret there, he'll be there to protect everybody. So then you're still going to be outnumbered in the house? No, the ferret will... Well, okay, so we'll get two ferrets. No, we're not getting (laughs) any ferrets. We're not getting a classroom ferret. We're um, not getting a home ferret. While we're we're bantering, I just want to try something new for this episode of Rush Vibes. So for all of you watching on YouTube... um, Hit the little subscribe button that's about to pop up right now. Uh, and for everybody listening on Apple or Spotify or Google or tune in. Tune in. Sorry. No, 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 no shade to the tune in listeners. All three of you. Um, be sure to <laughs> rate and leave a review for our podcast because that would do a tremendous job in helping our discovery. Uh, see, the way the algorithms work is if you don't have any ratings or you don't have any reviews, it won't suggest your podcast to people who are likely to listen to you and listen mm. to other podcasts like yours. So if you guys could go in there, help us out. It doesn't have to be anything. Uh, you don't have to write a dissertation. Um, just five stars would be preferable. And then just leave a little little line. We've got two reviews there um, and, and 10 ratings, which we appreciate. Um, but if you guys could continue to, uh, as you discover us and as you uh, download new episodes, feel free to you know, leave a rating and um, leave a review. Also, be sure to check us out on our social media. Those should be popping up down below. For those of you watching on YouTube, I'm having a lot of fun with these graphics and yes. learning how to bring all these things onto the screen. As this computer different. sounds like it's about to explode. Yeah, computer is about to like boot off into space like it's a SpaceX rocket. But um, enjoying it, skill building, mm-hmm. you know. That's what the dipping, COVID season is about. Dipping my toe into a little bit of everything. So, um, what are you? What are you drinking? I have some lime sparkling water, rum, and Trader Joe's lemon ginger echinacea. Shout juice. out to Trader Joe's. Uh, I'm just drinking Johnny Walker mm. Black because I'm gonna be real with you, America. That is all we have. No, all I have. That's all he has. That's all, all the whiskey I got we drinks. have. There's no, there's no bourbon or. I got or, plenty or of whiskey. Dr- I got I'm, plenty of drinks. I'm almost dry. So, if anybody wants to, you know, send the care package <laughs> of the finest bourbon or, or whiskey you can you can find, um, feel free to slide into our DMs and I can I can shoot you a, a drop off place because I'm not giving you my we'll address. Give you our PO box. No, we're not, we're not. Do we have a PO box? No, but I've always wanted a PO box. Oh, they um, seem cool. Let's do the toast thing. Oh yeah. That's so uh, we've got a pretty. Pretty, I don't want to say heavy, but you know, a pretty uh, important uh, topic we're going to discuss. For those of you who are familiar with headlines, there is a very popular uh, New York Times, I won't say popular, but there was a very viral New York Times article that came out last week uh, where a reporter followed three moms who are in the pandemic. Two were married, one was a single mother, um, and it just kind of tracked their journey, uh, uh, recapped a couple of days uh, when things kind of heightened and anxiety and stress and all that kind of boiled over. And it just kind of told uh, these women's stories from, from their point of view, so to speak. So uh, as a married couple who is uh, trying to navigate the currents of the, of a pandemic who also has children and then have also had to um, come to terms with the fact that, you know, we're probably not helping each other in the best ways in terms of things around the house. We decided to one talk about it first, 
<laughs> in private with the cameras off because I don't want to get caught off guard with Jessica, Je- Jessica dropped the scroll of, of grievances on me. Uh, but we just want to make sure we're on the same page. And it was actually a very productive talk. I think um, I, I, I started and kind of let her know where I realized I was falling short, but then she actually was able to, to um, bring Tell some him the places he forgot, <laughs> bring some different <laughs> perspectives. So that's coming up probably in the second segment, but before we get there, I just wanted to let you know that you don't have your braids in. You're showing off your, you know, you don't have them to have it down, but you know, you're, you've got your hair out, you know, flossing your COVID inches as you call it. And it looks good. Thanks. But you know, I'm, I told you guys I'm working on my skills and I'm trying to get into new thing, you know, video editing, audio. Uh, but I have two girls, two daughters. So I'm trying to get into like hair care. And understanding, you know, like out of style, the kind of material, the kind of products that you should use. And based on uh, my studies this week, you're missing just a little something. So I just want <laughs> to. If you, if you break <laughs> I, <that> just, <laughs> I just need a little bit of. You I just didn't need even a little know we of, owned some. Yeah, you just need a little bit of just around the. And then you get the shine. <laughs> and it's like a built in. You know, you don't have to change it out like every 45 Look, days. You just I, David, <laughs> if you accidentally spray Gorilla Glue so, in my hair. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys have seen. They have. The Twitter storm. They, it's everywhere. Uh, of the, the young lady who sprayed She's her hair young. with. The woman who sprayed her hair with Gorilla Glue thinking it was, I assume, another. No, nope. I'm not buying it. Uh, allegedly. Uh. I thought it was it. another product that has gorilla in it. Um, sprayed okay. her hair with it and then went on, was it TikTok? And maybe TikTok. showed how it was shiny and how her head wasn't moving. And then she like put lotion on and then it just like slicked right off. Um, I found out today that she's actually uh, suing, I think. See, I heard no. that she's suing Gorilla Glue and, and she has a GoFundMe out, which is actually up to like $9,000 as this, of this is what like I'm three not hours okay ago with. When, I, when I checked. We have to unpack everything you just So said. what I'm going to do. If you put the next Gorilla time, Glue in my children's The next hair. time I detail the car, I'm going to put Armor All on the steering wheel. <laughs> so when I inevitably crash, I'm going to say, Armor All, I'm suing you because you didn't say not to put on the steering wheel, even though I think they do say not to. So this probably wasn't the best joke. But yeah, so for those of you who don't know, do not put Gorilla Glue on your head. No. Or anywhere on your Look, body. What? There are about eight, mil- 8 billion people on this planet. And 700, 799, billion of us knew not to put Gorilla Glue on our hair. So this, this is, this is what I'm going to break down to you as a man who doesn't use these type gorilla of hair. Gorilla Glue? No, I don't hair use Gorilla product. Glue on my hair. I don't. Hair products. So there is, there's got to be glue which is a hairstyle, uh, a hair product, I think, by a company called Bedhead, if I'm not mistaken. I don't, I don't really use the, the gels and stuff. I don't, I don't wear wigs, so I don't have to, like, lay. I don't lay my edges because um, that's, just, that's just not my ministry for hair. Um, hair ministry. Okay. There's a hair ministry, and I, I'm, not, I'm not gifted. I'm not anointed in that ministry. Uh, I, can do, I can do my own braid. I can do, you know, a decent blowout. I can style children's hair, but I edges laying all of that stuff i can't do i I wasn't called for that so she ran out of that and one they are two distinctly different bottles they're different they are they're not even shaped they're not shaped the same the dispenser part the they both have gorillas on the front of them though and they're not even in the same section they're not you get gorilla like gorilla glue is near like the, uh, automotive the glue, yeah and it's, it's in it's in <laughs> housing stuff so maybe she she was looking for there's another product called gorilla like gorilla snot or something like that my my cousin georgia was telling me about it but one is shout out to georgia the uh hair care esquire queen she is she is a lawyer by night esquire by day <laughs> she is a lawyer and she's just everything you need to know about all oh things and hair. georgia if you're listening or watching i don't appreciate you not letting me know that uh don't put her business out there. Oh, okay. Never mind. You know what I'm talking about, though. I'm sorry, honey. This is why we don't tell him stuff. This is why we yeah, can't. Yeah, because I'm, like I'm like that rambunctious, can't take him anywhere cousin 
who just likes to get hype over people's You're not like successes. you are. Um, anyway, uh, so she was telling me there's a product, I think it's called Gorilla Snot, but it's, and it's a hair product, nice I know. Name. But it's spelled with one less L um, than actual Gorilla, so there's that. But, but again, it's... <sighs> This woman is 40 years old. Oh, is she that old? Yes. She's grown. She actually looked... She, I, she looked young. For 40, yeah, 40 is not old like, anymore. she was like 30. 40 is not old anymore. Um, and she's from Louisiana. And, you know, I grew up... My dad had a ch- has a church in Louisiana, so I grew up with that accent. So I do appreciate her accent and the way she says stuff. And a lot of Hollywood movies, if you notice, Are that have come out there. recently. Yeah, yeah have Especially been, in been New Orleans. Um, so I, lo- I, love, I love the... the the Louisiana accent. So listening to her speak was very nostalgic for me um, because it, I, it just reminded me of all the people that I, you know, would listen to speaking yeah. to my dad growing up. Um, <laughs> but she, she's 40. So she's not, she's not no kid. She's not uh, some 20 year old girl. Who's not try- no kid. Okay. Jessica, not come, no kid. come through with the she, Ebonics. She's okay. not, no, she's not no kid. All she's right. a grown woman. She's been you know, what's so funny about Jessica saying like, not no is when Jessica and I were dating courts, this is a side. So forgive me. When Jessica and I were dating, she was in school. So she was just like, so proper. She was just like Miss Bougie. So I remember I one time am. I went over to her, her apartment and her roommate was there and her roommate was telling a story about uh, some dude. She had <laughs> some girl, <laughs> she knew who had ended up having a kid by 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 the, a, a bum a deadbeat and he wasn't around so the her roommate was telling the story about oh how you know she's all on her own she's trying to juggle school and take care of the baby and jessica was like and where is the child's father <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh, yeah Lord. i think they both came from me they were like you mean the baby's daddy like, you mean the baby daddy check where the child's father I is mean, this a court of law are we i I'm Your sorry. Honor? I just I wanted to respect. Where is the child's father? I wanted to respect him as an individual. The child's father. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Continue. This I'm woman sorry. was 40. She's a whole what 22 years past 18, which means she's been paying taxes, hopefully, for 22 years. That that is such a qualifier for adulthood for me. When you when she realized she was out of her hairspray, and she picked this up. Even the way the monkey is look, the gorilla is looking at you on the bottle, lets you know that he's here for some serious stuff. And it says spray adhesive. Nobody puts adhesive in hair. So I'm, I'm not. Some people are like, oh, she didn't know. She mixed it up. I don't believe her. I don't. I don't buy it. I think she's trying to save face because she recognizes how foolish she appears and how she set us back uh and by us i mean brown people black people she does say heavy heavy duty bond though so like when you just really want to make sure that your edges stay tight you could make the argument no no oh i tried stay in your lane (laughs) so i'm not i'm not going to defend her i'm very much so upset and disappointed in her lack of judgment and thinking that that no gorilla glue released a statement on twitter (laughs) <laughs> they were like, we're unfortunate. Well, we're glad to hear that the young woman is like seeking medical help, but um, our label clearly says <laughs> not to use, not to use on skin. So you got you got a uh, you got some some woke folk uh, in there trying to say, uh, well, your label says don't put on skin. Hair is not skin. Therefore, you all are in trouble. No, yeah, you know, I I'm, I don't support shoulders. There are some some shoulders. Some arms coming out of sockets because people are reaching. On so this far, one I don't support the attempting. I mean, it sucks. The, the attempt at suing them because it's like the McDonald's lady who bought coffee. Like certain things, that I I am not. I didn't study law. I'm not a lawyer. I reference my Esquire, Georgia, and I think common sense should be admissible in court. So, like, there are certain things that you just know. So like the McDonald's lady, if you order a cup of well, coffee so that's the, not iced, so it's I actually, hot. So that actually came up in my uh, one of my MBA studies because I have an MBA, Master's of no, Business and Association. From, shout out to the UNC Wilmington Seahawks. The school that has the racist professor that they couldn't get rid of. It wasn't, it wasn't racist. He was just toxic. <laughs> okay. Um, but his, his story ended sadly, so let's not reference that. But um, no, I think it was the woman, it was actually she was driven, being driven to McDonald's by her mother. Um, they ordered coffee, and what it turns out is that the coffee was was bought was uh, it was it was it was made Hot? at higher temperature than what's necessary. 
Um, and no, they didn't have caution hot on it, but it ended up spilling and it, you know, it, it, it caused some significant damage to her uh, legs. And this is an older woman. I think she was like in her eighties. And so they were just, they just asked McDonald's if they would help cover some of the, some of the bills, hospital bills in there. And McDonald's was like, nah. <laughs> so that's why they sued him. And in essence won. Um, so there's, it's interesting how, uh, certain things get in the headlines. They become part of like pop culture or whatever. And the, the wide, uh, uh, stance on it is that, oh, she was just trying to like game the system or get over. But, and honestly, if you watch the, the video, she really wasn't. But once McDonald's was trying to be all snooty, snooty. yeah, snooty, they were like, okay, well, we'll see you in court. And then they won. Well, I don't support her suing. Gorilla Glue. No, I, I know she's no, gonna go through with not. it. Um, she'll she probably, may not need to. She's got to go fund me. That's at like nine thousand dollars. Only at nine thousand. She's not. She's not there yet. I don't know when it started though. It could have started like this morning. Nine thousand dollars in a day is that's true. Pretty significant. But her people Instagram love a sob page, story though. I believe her Instagram need, is now verified. I need. To- yes, her Instagram page is verified. <laughs> Or is her, did she change the title to Gorilla Glue Girl? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> GGG. But this is, it's just very troubling. And the one thing I do applaud her for is that she was not lazy with her style. Because could you have imagined if she was like, oh, I'm just going to throw my hair up and then seal it with this Gorilla Glue. And it was like, it wasn't perfectly smooth. There yeah. were some gaps. And now this is your permanent hairstyle. I personally think like this is just going to be her wig season. And she needs to get herself some really good wigs. Her hair is already laid back. Like, she doesn't have to worry about a wig cap. None of that. Like, she she is set for some good wigs. I feel like she's 40. That means she's had 40 years of her hair. Um, so now she's just going to have to go the rest of her life without it. Because her hair follicles, I'm certain, are dead. Because she said it's been a month. She said it's been a month she's washed her well, hair. Well, I saw a picture on Twitter. I don't know if it's real or not because you can never I heard, trust. I heard it's not. It's the ball where the they way shaved she was it. Bald. I heard that was something uh, trolling. Okay. And if you think about it, the hair, the picture had hair on the side, and her whole hair was head was shaved down. I mean, was glued down, so she wouldn't have any hair on the side on the side. That's um, true. So yeah, she um, she's got she had forty good years with her hair. Get into your wig game. I applaud you for not being lazy. At least your last style was 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 semi slaying, and you know it's. I know it hurts. I know because you could hear the the almost tear, the, like the tears coming, and that's really what set me over the edge. <laughs> when she was like, "I yeah. washed my hair fifteen times," <laughs> and she put the conditioner, and she just kind of polished it off. <laughs> Oh. So yeah, rough. that's um so we, but she's everywhere now. Yeah, she is. And unfortunately her name is Tessica. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's all like that. Yeah, yeah, I've I, seen I, I've I seen guess. Jessica spelled with a G. I've never seen yeah, it spelled I, with a T. I, I have nothing. Um, uh, I but, you know, I, I don't want to spend too much more time on the stupidity. I mean, it's funny, but it's also just and really, I hope really stupid. all of you out like don't be encouraged um, to do something stupid so that you can become verified. Like, yeah, don't, don't, do it. don't don't do it mess for the gram. with Gorilla Glue. Don't do it for the gram. It'll get you. It'll get you got. Um, so we we talked on cancel culture last episode. We did, uh, and we had some questions. Some really some really great uh, uh, stuff happening in the comment section. Um, we got we got back to it a little late. Sorry, um, uh, growing creator. Uh, struggles, I guess we have to be sure to respond more quickly, but, um, some really great, great comments in there. Um, one question I wanted to read from C Tucker four thirty. Hey, appreciate you. Uh, the question was, uh, what, uh, what of the diasporic Africans who done Kente and Kara mud cloth and adopt traditional names of tribes and nations back East or how, as of late, there are young motherland Africans who mimic African Americans, in particular celebrities in their style of dress, dress, clothing, and hairstyles. Is that not cultural appropriation? And I commented that we would touch on it on this episode, so I wanted to save the second segment for you know strictly the New York Times article. So I wanted uh, to throw that to you uh-huh. as, the, as the resident African in the uh, on, on the team. But we've um, only got about eight minutes, so okay. So I will attempt to make this short so it's it's such a fine line i think one in my opinion at least the the ghanians my people that i've i i know that i've grown around are pretty what do you mean your people 
My people. I'm from sorry, Ghana. you only got eight minutes. I'm my people from my Ghana. Bad. Bad. Um, they're pretty welcoming in terms of others embracing their culture. So it's like, oh, you want to try Ghanaian food? We got you. You want to like you want to wear this? We got you. Um, and it's pretty welcome from Africans to black. And then also from Africans to whites. So I really think it's, I, I don't person. it's tricky. It's really tricky because there are multiple ways you can look at it. Cause sometimes I'm very sensitive about people wearing kente cloth. Um, one, if it doesn't originate from Ghana there, every kente cloth tells a story. So it's not like, a fabric that you're just going into Joann's and buying. Like it's made by Shout hand. Shout out to Joann Fabrics. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, no, cause they make, they I have, said, I spent a lot of time in there as a kid. Cause my mom was always in Joann's. She's, so she's still in there. I would be we, just we, laid out on the floor, just waiting for her to, to be done to finish. Cause he's, he struggled. So if you look at it from that perspective, if you don't understand the story behind your the kente cloth it's very particular and even fabrics mean something like um there was something happening a couple years ago and someone had asked if they could borrow some fabric of like something that i had a dress or some material that i had and i said i could i couldn't lend it to them because i had worn that to a to the funeral of my grandfather so it's like i can't just let you wear it for recreational use because everybody in the family wore a dress, an outfit that was made from this particular fabric. So though you might, the American cultures, things you just buy and, and things don't have meaning. Whereas, you know, Kente cloth, it, 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 the, it, it, there's so much more that goes into it than just going into a store and buying it. Um, and Ghana had, Kente has become very popular. Like the Chinese make knockoff Kente, uh, which is another conversation for another day. Cause I can go on and on about that. Um, Chinese be knocking up everybody though. They so really do. Don't feel, they, they really <laughs> don't do. Don't feel targeted. And it's, it's, it's insulting. I get why they need to do it, but, or hey. why they choose to do it, but it's insulting hey. because there's, there's more to it. Capitalism, um, baby. Trying to make a buck. I don't necessarily have a problem with someone who is black American wearing kente. I mean, I, I don't want to see you like in a nightclub rocking, rocking kente just because like, yo, we turn Why it up. Not? We turn it up in this kente. Cause that's not how it would be worn. Kente is a very special, like, Growing up, when I would, when we would go to, you know, when somebody would die, or there was a a, a, f a wedding or an outdooring, which is essentially, um, what do you guys call it? It's um, an outdooring in Ghana is, is a no. It's a presentation of the baby. So after the baby is born, oh, christening, sort of after a baby is born to a Ghanaian parent, you, you a mother, the mother and the baby stay in for a significant amount of time. So it's like, this is our introduction of the baby to the world. And it's a big party and celebration. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so usually you'll see Kentis. I remember growing up, there was one man. I remember because we got in trouble for that. We did. Um, there was <laughs> one we, man we, in. We saw Jess pop solid. Our, first, our firstborn out popped her out. And like 10 minutes later, she was on Facebook. Anyway. Jessica, Jessica got yelled at. I didn't get anyway. Um, growing up, there was, there was this couple in Worcester. And they were kind of like the like the Ghanaian elders in Worcester growing up, Mr. Boating and his wife. And I remember Shout out. Don't no, you don't need I to couldn't pronounce I'm not gonna don't, butcher don't the try. name, so I'm just gonna um, say shout out. And as a kid, one thing I always admired is they would come in their like to an event, a funeral or something, they're matching Kente. And Mr. Boating was a big he was a big man. He had presence. And he I would always remember him like if he was dancing or speaking, he would throw his fabric over his shoulder. And it it's such a it's such a beautiful image for me. So it's boss move. It is. Power it, move. Like that's a that's a that's a Ghanaian man's power move. Throwing that fabric over the I shoulder, respect like it. I respect whoo, it. You, you don't mess with that. So for for us, for me, and I'm only I, I'm only gonna speak for me, I have respect for it. I have respect for coach. So, you know, there are black Americans who do understand what goes into it, who do, you know, research it and learn it and don't just appropriate. Cause it. that was a thing, right? When black Panther came out, yeah, there was a thing like, Oh, like a lot of these, these black Americans are just throwing just, stuff on without any kind of appreciation, not necessarily the, not an issue that they were wearing it, but like you said, they didn't understand like the culture and the history it. and, and the reason why it's normally worn in its native, mm -hmm. native uh, and, homeland. And Black so. Panther actually got sued because they didn't get clear, like they didn't get the rights to 
wear kente yeah. from Ghana before putting but it. Nancy in the Pelosi film. did. You know when they did the little. I'm sure they. I'm little, sure they're planning on coming for her A little performative. Too. The little performative. Don't get y'all. That wasn't necessary because yeah. I know that Chuck Schumer in the was back. From China. Chuck Schumer was in the back with his. Uh, so with his bad knees. I don't. Like, I, I'm surprised Chuck got up. <laughs> you know Chuck's pushing Leave like. Chuck alone. <laughs> Chuck's got to be pushing like Look, 80. Nancy's in her 80s and she's she's rocking heels. Yeah, so but Nancy is. I don't even wear heels. The height that Nancy. I was wearing. worried. I was like, oh lord, somebody go help Chuck Schumer up. I thought I it was gonna be like a flash mob, like Congress flash mob. They just like pose and then like a Justin Bieber <laughs> uh, song comes on. All right, you got like um, a couple minutes. So I don't necessarily mind it as long as you respect it and 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 yeah. you're not doing it to to be trendy, which is what most people are. Um, I think I'm fine with a black American because in my mind, most black Americans, all black Americans, you're rooted from Africa. Um, so, you know, I felt at, at least 70 percent of black Americans, if you did your genealogy, you would probably have some connection to Ghana or but don't. Um, don't do that DNA stuff. One of your cousins don't already did it, so they already don't got you in the you. system. So don't commit a crime because they're don't gonna catch you. you. That's how Hold they got out. the the Oakland killer guy. Yeah, no, no. Um, so yeah, that's I don't. Sloppy. I don't think I see, and that's why appropriation is so sensitive One because, minute. like, you could wear something and go to a Ghanaian event, and some of and maybe someone would try to call you out on it, and you'd be like, "Oh, my wife's from Ghana," and so it's like, "Oh, okay." No, I'd be like, "No, I'm. It's you and me. I'm. I, I, I'm your brother." No. I am I I too. You know it's it's funny. <laughs> I too am Ghanaian. There, there's a Ghanaian DJ in Charlotte, and I was working with him when I was working at a nightclub, and he actually thought David <laughs> David was from Ghana. <laughs> I was like, bro, this is I, a this is a, this is a poser right here. I was like, I'm, I'm I'm the Ghanaian. I probably have a relative who's related to you. <laughs> like, how are you going to assume that he like hey, seriously? Hey, I'm like Pitbull, baby, and Mr. Worldwide. No, he's not. Uh, he's Mr. Mr. East Coast. <laughs> that's, that's that's the truth, Mr. East Coast, um, Mr. So, Seven Hundred Three and Seven Hundred Four. So yeah, I mean, I think we'll have to do another episode where we, you know, further dive into just cultural appropriation and and then recognizing that everyone defines it differently. Everyone has different things that offend them. So what might offend me might not offend somebody else, and what offends me might not offend someone else. So I think we just have to recognize that. And also understand that everyone reserves the right to change their mind. Because things that didn't offend me in the past, now I'm like, okay, that's not cool. Like, don't do that no more. So I, I don't want to keep going because I know I'm going to yeah, get cut off. I'm going to get cut off. So, uh, yeah, we'll... Uh, Elaborate on another day. I'll stop there. But uh, feel free to share your comments on that part in the uh, in the comments. As well as your thoughts on Gorilla Glue styling. And we'll be back David. after the break. All right. We are back. We're back. So, we're just gonna go. Ahead. We're just gonna get right into it. Are we? I'm saying that because I got ready? my, I got my, I got my. Your armor on. Let's yeah. let's actually set this up. So I was, <laughs> I think I was down here. You might have been upstairs doing something. And I was I get, putting our child to sleep. Can you please? Can I you put handle it on your, silent. I don't know why. Because your screen is on. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> Um, I put it on do not disturb. Lord have mercy. And don't call me an amateur. Goodness. So I, I was down here. <laughs> On the couch, um, my phone goes off. I get a message to my Facebook messenger, which is lucky because I... Spoiler alert, it was me. I, I hardly ever check my Facebook messenger. It has to be perfect divine timing for me to check it. Some people will like reply to a picture that I post on my story. And I, I'm like, thanks, it, like six weeks later. And I don't even remember what the picture was. So I, oh, I looked at... He was like, I think he suggested that we'll do this as our topic so i opened the article i read the title and i was like back to facebook are you sure because this is i'm already triggered just by reading reading this and he was like it's okay and those are her exact exact words mm -hmm. and i knew and i knew that that would be the case which is why i wanted to talk about it because i figured this was an opportunity for her to uh just talk about something that i mean we've we've dealt with personally she's dealt with personally and something that I, a topic that i believe she's very passionate about because it resonates so it does so you want me to yeah you want to toss it back over I'm okay gonna, I'm gonna pass so, it to you. yeah so there was a new york times article that came out um forgive me i don't have it in front of me but i can't remember the reporter's name but basically like i said in the lead-in to the show uh it followed three three women different parts of the country who are, are dealing with the pandemic and, and kids uh under three very different circumstances so one mother um i believe she was 30 um she um she had two daughters 
Uh, one was one was autistic, and so she worked from home. But the type of autism that her her daughter is dealing with I means she can't speak, so she has to communicate uh, with her teacher via the tablet. Um, so you have to like always have uh, always be at attention. And she has a younger daughter who is in school, but she does her remote schooling upstairs. Um, and she pretty much has to rely on her to be self sufficient. And her husband is I think an engineer of some sort, yeah. but he works out of the house. Um, and then there's another woman who's a single mom. Um, her her ex husband picks her son up on the weekends, but he's not really around. Mm-hmm. She works as a paralegal and doesn't get good benefits. She doesn't have benefits at all. Uh, no, she has she has benefits, but she doesn't get any. Um, no, I don't no, think she, she doesn't does. have benefits. No, she doesn't have benefits. Uh, so it's like, don't get, <laughs> okay. So it was just, it was just, it's just rough. So she has to homeschool him. And there was even a quote from her that where she said, you know, like, I'm great at mom, I'm great at momming, but I'm, I'm not good at educating, uh, just to struggle because she's not even sure that she can't even really work from home. So what she ends up having to do is drop her son off at another mom, um, at another mom's home who has a son his age. And then they actually uh, do school together sometimes. Uh, but there was one time where the mom had to work, so they just had to like lock the doors and leave them home by themselves, which is just a, as a, you know, as uh, 10 years ago, I would have been like, oh, so what? You know, they're fine. But like as a parent with <laughs> a five year old who we can't really leave alone for too long, mm. it's like, ooh. But I mean, if she has a fully charged tablet nah. and a full and then, stomach, <laughs> she might not notice we're not here. And then there's a, there's another mom who uh, are both her and her husband work in mental health. They have like a really young child, like a yeah. two or three year old. And she works part time. He works. She works part time. He works actually three jobs. And um, their story was probably the most uh, triggering, I would think, because I think it Mm -hmm. it relates most to us, even though they only have one kid and we have two. um, I think their circumstances were the most similar, I think, out of all the stories. So the the article, it's 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 pretty decent, um, but it does a good job of highlighting each woman, um, what their you know, what their background is a little bit and then just kind of what their day to day is like. And then it, it highlights their low points. Um, and then it highlights, you know, their opinion of what the pandemic has been like for them. And then at the end it kind of wraps up with, you know, uh, hopeful, uh, horizons for them and, and, and what uh, their lives were like toward the end of the, the study. Cause this was, I think the reporters started following them in September mm-hmm. and the article just came out. So that probably finished up around maybe the end of the year, um, into January. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's very eye opening. Um, I think a lot of the statistics, ooh, a lot of the statistics that have come out have, have highlighted how women are a lot have suffered the most, uh, in terms of, uh, the jobs that have been eliminated and a lot of women have elected to leave the workforce because they've had to choose between caring for their children being the, or being the primary caretaker of the kids, you know, even if they're in a two, two parent household. Um, or working and, you know, most women have elected probably not by choice to, to stay home Mm -hmm. and, and forego working. So it's, uh, it was, I'll, I'll just say, you know, for me reading it, uh, it was very eye opening. Like I said, I knew a lot of the statistics just by reading and, and trying to keep up with, with current events, but it was actually, um, it was convicting for me, especially when there were a couple of scenarios where, uh, there were there were interactions with the husbands and the husbands were kind of just like, <laughs> you know, kind of checked out of, of, of the chaos. And I was like, man, these guys suck. I was like, Wait a minute. <laughs> like, I've done that before. So uh, I, I think Jess will, will speak to some more uh, specific instances, but I was able to kind of read that. And it was extremely eye opening for me. And, and, and I was I was convicted. So um after I had a chance to read through the article and, and take some notes, you know, that's when Jessica and I sat down and, you know, I just kind of let her know, like, Hey, I, but I think the first thing I told her when she, she got home after I'd read it, I was like, yo, I, I get it. And it sucks that it takes like an article, um, with strangers who I, I know nothing about and will probably never meet to kind of give me that perspective that my own wife has kind of been screaming for. Uh, but I think the most important thing is, is that, yeah, timing is not great. But I, I do get it. Uh, so um, I think that that was important. So, we you know, we had a dialogue and allowed her to kind of express herself and, and get some of her frustrations out. And it was it was good. You know, sometimes, you know, be it uh, sometimes just as as 
as a married person in a relationship, you kind of just need to sit and let the other person tell you how they're feeling um, and how they feel you could be better. Um, and it doesn't always have to be a back and forth. Sometimes it can just be a fourth. <laughs> and then you don't have to always, you can always have to volley it back. Sometimes you can just take it and, um, you know, you'll, you'll have your time to, to air, you know, whatever your feelings are later. So I will give you the floor. I will allow you to, to speak on your, um, your opinion of the article and then, you know, how you're able to connect with it personally. Yeah. So I thought the article was really well written. Uh, I thought it was relatable as, as a mom, as a woman, um, as a co participant in this pandemic. Um, it, it, it's definitely very triggering. It's reassuring. I don't like using the word reassuring, but it's kind of nice to realize that you're not the only person who feels this way and you're not the only person who is struggling. I think the one good thing about the pandemic is we've normalized or we've recognized how common struggle and difficulty and mental health and all of those things are in everyday life. And the burden of being a mom, a wife is, you know, one, it, not even just wanting, but having the instinct to keep everything going and everyone going and losing a sense of yourself. So as I'm reading all these articles or reading through this article and seeing how each woman is, is dealing with their day to day, you know, I, I quickly picked up like that they don't have a moment to do anything for themselves. Everything is for someone else. Um, every part of their day is allocated to this other person. That's not them. And frankly, that's exhausting. It's, it's, it's something I do. It's something I struggle with. And you almost feel guilty when you take a moment to yourself because, you know, I, 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 for instance, I love working in my planner. I love, you know, decorating it. It's kind of the only thing I get to do for me. And if I do it in free time, which is hard to come by, in the back of my head, I think of all the things I could be doing. I'm looking around at the mess and I'm, oh, I could have been cleaning this. I could have been doing that. I could have been preparing dinner. But in the same moment, I'm like, I need, I just need a moment to myself. I need to regroup and charge even if it's just a little bit um and a lot of us women we don't get that opportunity and especially if you have small children where they're you're their life source and even if you are blessed to have a two-parent household and you have a partner for some reason kids just don't recognize dads as capable of doing things. I've been upstairs. David has been downstairs with Solace and Solace will come all the way upstairs and ask me for something that is literally next to David. I have left the house to go grocery shopping or to work out and I've come home and not even fully stepped into the house and heard mommy, I'm hungry. And she's been home with her dad for an hour, two hours, and it doesn't dawn on her to ask him. So, or as soon as I step in the house, I have Sovereign who is crawling to me, who's not like in her mind, her one-year-old mind saying, oh, mom just got in the house. Let me give her a moment to, you know, prepare herself. No, it's, it's your, your mom, the instant you step in. So it's overwhelming to never really get an escape and every moment of your day of your life is allocated to someone else it's fulfilling i love being a mom i will be frank i didn't choose to be a mom i didn't plan to be a mom uh well not not as early as as you were we'd always talked about having kids though right Did we though? <clears throat> excuse me yeah because your thing was we would we would travel and do all the extravagant things that that we wanted to do as as a single as a couple without kids for a few years and then we would eventually have kids. i don't know that i was fully sold on the idea to have kids what um, you mean? You're the one who, that was your thing yeah but yeah, then i think once it. we were married one i didn't want to have kids so early in our marriage because i wanted an out uh, <laughs> i'm just be, i'm just i'm just being frank Cut. um you know if either first year of marriage statistics say like is very tough so in my mind i was like Yo, if this first year don't work out and no kids, like, 
cut ties. You go your way. I go my way. We don't run in the same circles. I ain't never going to see you again. But if we have kids and this doesn't work out, I'm stuck with you. Like, and it's not like 18 years stuck with you. I'm stuck with you. I got to see you at birthdays. I got to see you at weddings. I got to see you at funerals. I got to, I got to see you all the time. So I wasn't sold on kids early and anybody I know, like, any friend we have that like goes to have like they're they're married and they're like or they're getting married oh we want to have kids quickly i'm like no don't do it do you first and the rest shall follow so well go ahead ahead. so you know but i i do enjoy being a mom i do i love my kids my kids have helped shape me to become the have contributed to shaping me into becoming the woman i am today so I don't know who I'd be if I didn't have, I, I'll say solace for the most part because she's the oldest one, you know, Savi just kind of joined the picture. Um, and she's, she's actually challenged me in some significant ways and grown me in some significant ways. I think she's made me a lot more transparent, but I, I don't know who I'd be if I wasn't a mom, I'd be more timid. I wouldn't be as bold to take chances and to kind of speak my mind. So I appreciate that I have my daughters and I appreciate that I want to be an example of being a strong woman so that they can be fearless and know that they can be a mom and a wife and a career woman and have all the things. But it's definitely difficult. I'd be lying if I didn't say I had moments where I was like, this would be so much easier if I didn't have kids i'd be able to accomplish this if i didn't have kids um i you know i'll i've been in the career hunt for quite some time now and not job hunt career hunt which are two different things um and i think i i'll see a job that interests me and i'm like oh i could apply but then you know reading the description reading the schedule it's not remote it's not flexible And, you know, I want to be an involved mom. I want to be available for recitals. I want to be available for drop off and pick up at school. So, you know, that balance of my wants and my needs, they clash specifically because I am a mom. If it was just David and I, we we could make do with if I, I mean, I traveled most of the first year of our marriage and then recently he traveled up until he left his previous position so it's like we could make this work if we if that was our structure but when you have kids especially as a mom like you you want to be around for that and in this pandemic you know i have a great husband and i think that's put your arm down that's me by the way because this that was just the qualifier yeah okay just you, you're taking your one. No, I'm just okay. taking it while I can um, get it. He, I have a great husband, but he re, like, he falls short a lot, a lot. Like we he, all fall short of the glory, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just you know trying to build my case a little bit here. It's um, it's, it's already be. a lost cause. I'm a wife. <laughs> I'm a wife getting ready to go in on you. There's no case you lost. Uh, there's no lawyer. This, who's and this going is to why this case. is why I want us to talk about it before we went out. Because if we just went straight on oh, without having, it would be it would be, be so bad. I'd be over here so like I would shred him. So at to least, pieces. and she still did, but at least I was able to. It, but I did it, it politely. No, you did. You were very, you were very composed, and you uh, were very transparent. Uh, transparent, and you, but you were also very, very thoughtful in your delivery. You didn't just. It wasn't just raw emotion coming out. You you took time to collect your thoughts and then you, you conveyed exactly how you were feeling, but without being too inflammatory. But you know, there were some things that you just couldn't sugarcoat and and those things you delivered as you needed to. And, you know, I'm a big boy and, and I I can, I can take constructive criticism. Um, Sometimes, sometimes I I can take it most of the time. Sometimes it hits me sideways and I got to go, I got to go, I got to go process it. And then more times than not, I'm going to come back like, yo, you know, you were right. So, uh, and I'm, I'm one, that's one thing I will, I don't beat my chest a lot, but that's one thing I will, I will proudly stand up and, and be braggadocious about is that, um, I'm, I'm very down to earth when it comes to certain people, people who I trust telling me about myself. Um, no one likes to hear that they're not doing well and no one likes to be, you know, sort of torn down. Uh, but you know, I'm able to kind of take that information, take those, those thoughts and those feelings 
and really just sit and p- sit with it and process it and then come back and be like, you know what? I took, you know, I looked at everything you said, you know, you, you know, you're right. I'll, I'll be better. So that's the main reason why I want to have the conversation beforehand. Um, but I, you know, it, when I, when I read the article and I was, I was immediately convicted. I was like, all right, well, this, <laughs> I already know what this is going to be like, but it, I think it's important one for us to have this, uh, conversation to put it out because I think a lot of people who follow us on social media think that, you know, and I know everyone knows couples have, you know, their, their things. Um, but you know, we have, you know, there's stuff that we've been, we've been battling for years and still battling. And, you know, we, we still have, you know, things that we can do to improve. So I just wanted to have like a real conversation about, you know, a re- very real topic that's affecting both of us, but obviously you way more than me. Yeah, I think myself, I go through a lot of moments where I just, I wonder like where his head is, <laughs> like where you at, man. Um, and I think part of it comes down to maternal instinct. Maternal instinct and paternal instinct are very different. Um, one thing that I know frustrates me about my husband is he tells me all the things he's capable of doing but doesn't actually do it. So then I don't actually believe that he's capable of doing it. I don't do them in, in a, uh, necessary. I don't always do them in a, in a timely manner. Should, should I would yes. step in and correct her. Uh, but even like with the care of the girls, like he, he always claims if I'm not around, he won't like, he sleeps light enough to hear them. But when I'm around, he's able to tell his mind like that he doesn't need to worry about it. And to me, that's, kind of insulting no that's not you can't tell me that it's not no no no, no, i'm saying that's not what i say i don't say that i i don't intentionally be like oh i don't gotta i gotta wake up because just as home i just don't so that's (laughs) that's not intense i'm not like ah i don't have to wake up because just is here it's just i just don't if for for some i don't know what it is i normally don't wake up until you're already out of the bed and i said earlier tonight by then it's already too late because you're not gonna get back in bed anyway you're gonna be like oh it's too late i'm already up yeah. So, uh, but to, uh, because I realized my shortcomings and I realized that, you know, it's no longer acceptable. It was never acceptable, but definitely no longer acceptable. Um, I've moved the baby monitor to my side of the bed and I turned the volume up because she actually muted it because she can just, I can hear her like, through the walls. Just, she can just wake up I, <laughs> as soon I, as the baby, I as soon have as like such a connection to my child. I can hear her as soon as the baby the wall. Like, turns over, Jessica, like. I'm up and I fly. Like if she cries, so, I, I can be out the bed and in her room in probably three so steps. That's just one of the, one of the improvements that we've yeah, decided to But make. who's to say that even though it's next to him with the sound on that I'm not going to wait. I'm still probably well, we'll going find out to tonight. wake up. Hopefully. Um, I mean, hopefully we won't, but if she, get to sleep through the if night she wakes anyway. up, I mean, we'll, but we'll find out. I th- one, I, and I hope we share the article in our post so that you can get a chance to read it. It's definitely very eye opening. It's very relatable as a as a woman, as a mom. You know, like he said, there was one couple. I believe their name, her name was Mercedes. I can't remember what her husband's name is. And there, she one excerpt. She talks about how you know her husband was working, got a snack, and like took a nap on the couch. And you know, she's wrangling a baby. And she's trying to do stuff for herself. And I think she even had to turn down a full-time position because she recognized that it's just not feasible for her, her, her situation, her family situation. And you always wonder, like, why do certain things always have to fall on the woman? And why some, for me, sometimes I'm like, why don't men just get it? And it's really tough because, you know, I recognize that I have a good man. And that can be very dangerous because when you have a good man, you kind of let them get away with stuff that you really shouldn't. Like I, I try to hold David to really high standards, but I recognize that one, he's spoiled. Um, he was spoiled when I got him. I love, I love my mother-in-law, but, um, he was spoiled when I got him. He's a last born, and like he's 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 mommy's baby. Shout out to all the last borns out there. No, I see you. No, I don't shout you guys out because you guys are all. I'm, I'm shouting. You, you guys out. are all spoiled <laughs> in some capacity in one way or another. Last borns are spoiled, and I'm a firstborn. So you know, I, I a lot of times 
let the fact that he's a good man he's he's he, he these are all the things that he does all his good qualities overshadow his shortcomings and i don't hold him to standard and i think women are guilty of that where you have a man and he does this he does that you know he he doesn't cheat he doesn't you know one's sliding in his dms and if they are he's there he's not responding back and all that so it's like that makes it okay but i made these like you impregnated me so these people are 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 50 if not more percent your responsibility because i had to carry them i had to push them i'm still somebody's life source so a lot of times it's just very much so overwhelming when it's like i got the short end of the stick where you know i'm struggling trying to find a career and i think the most vulnerable thing that i said to him was my biggest fear in looking for because I'm, I'm working freelance stuff, but I, I genuinely want like a, 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 a full time career position. But my fear is, you know, you have your job and when you need to work, you can step away. You can go into a room and you can close the door. And I I just have to accept that I'm I'm stuck with these children i i have to regulate a kindergartner and make sure she's on task for school and then i have to regulate a f one-year-old and make sure she's not interrupting class make sure she's not screaming getting her down for a nap preparing lunch all of these things as well as taking care of myself so i said what my fear is or my anxiety is i get a job and now i have all of these responsibilities that were already mine on my plate and instead of being able to allocate some of those responsibilities elsewhere, I'll keep those responsibilities and then I've added a full-time job. And then it'll bite me in the butt where it's like, well, you're the one who wanted the job. You're the one who wanted to work. And that's very overwhelming. And it's sad that I have to think like that. But there are just some things that are in my DNA are, are just habitual inside of me to know what to do to get them done whereas like day i feel like a lot of times i need to get to my wit's end before david's like oh let me handle this let me take care of this let me let me step in here which is why i think a lot of men think women nag and it's not that we're nagging it's just that in my opinion it seems like you're not picking up the i'm vibing right I'm now nag i'm bit. vibing I'm nagging. vibing. Thank you. Um, so I think we we have to nag because it's like that's a, it's it's almost and you do it. Sometimes the only way I can get genuinely gets you to respond is through me being upset. Like you need to be like, oh, she's she's mad. So I like I get mad and then for some reason you get mad when I'm mad at you, which is annoying. We'll discuss that another day. And then it's like, okay, you're going to isolate yourself. But then I get more mad because it's like, oh, you get to get mad and isolate yourself. And I'm still mad at you and I'm stuck with your <laughs> your kids. So, you know, just going through that article and seeing the struggle and just recognize like one of the, uh, I think her name is Dakota, Dakota, I, I, I hate that yeah, I'm Dakota probably, sounds right. Well, Dakota, um, she was saying how, you know, she's dealing with her, her 16 year old daughter who's nonverbal autistic. And, you know, they got the 11 year old, they got a, pu a pandemic puppy. Her husband came home from work. She was trying to tell him to wash his hands. And he like direct, like the teacher was speaking and he pointed at her to like focus on the teacher speaking to her and then went and got himself a snack and like just went about his business. And it's beer 30. <laughs> And it's so difficult because I'm torn because I get it. Like he's also been out and he's been working, but she's been working. She's been regulating school. She's been, you know, making lunch, taking a puppy out to use the bathroom, all that stuff. And he's coming in and he just gets to go about his business. And that's really how it feels like for some of us women where it's like you our lives are almost separate and you get to choose. You have an a la carte option of, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, play with the kid for a couple minutes and then go do something else that interests me. I'm going to be in the bathroom for 45 minutes to an hour. And, you know, David and I actually joke about that on Facebook. I pick on him about it, but it's really frustrating to me because I can't even go to the bathroom just to go to the bathroom, like it takes me maybe 45 seconds to urinate in the bathroom without Sovereign coming to find me, without Solace coming in and literally saying, oh, mommy, I see you're in the bathroom. 
you probably want privacy but she's in the bathroom with me um I said, I can't. So it's like the audacity that you get to go to the bathroom and be in there for an hour. Why you want to be in there that long? I don't know. But I don't have that luxury. I, and we talked about it when we were breaking down the article. I said, you know, in the morning we wake up, we get Salas ready for school. She starts school. Savi usually takes a nap within two hours of waking up. She takes a nap. I take my shower. I have like maybe if sh- if it's a perfect nap, an hour and a half to take a shower, find something to eat, come downstairs, maybe get five minutes to myself before Solace needs something or before I have to tell Solace to stay focused or get back on task or help her find it. Um, and then she has lunch, start making her lunch, Savi wakes up, and then it's like that moment to myself is, is absolutely gone. Um, so it's definitely overwhelming being you know the woman of a house with children with with a husband and and just sometimes feeling like you all you have the option to participate or the option to not like I don't feel like it right now and and that's cool and I can't say anything about it because then it'll start something and I don't always want to start something I think that's a good stopping point because um, I think that's a good stopping point. And then we'll continue when we come back. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Cool. All right. So we are back for our last segment. uh, Talking about the New York Times article highlighting three mothers battling a pandemic. And apparently their husbands. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, so um a couple things I wanna I wanna I wanna touch on. And um I think I know you said something about you feel like you can't you can't really like uh you feel like you have to do everything because uh there's not necessarily a high level of trust or you don't necessarily uh feel confident um in my ability to do certain things or or to realize right away or within the time, the amount of time that it would take you, that certain things need to be done or to be handled. And I remember one quote from, I think it was, I think it was Mercedes saying that, um, or I think it might've been Dakita mm-hmm. saying that, um, you know, she can't do everything. Um, and it's, it's a process for her to like realize that, you know, that's okay. Like you almost feel guilty for saying like, I'm going to offload some of this. I'm going to delegate. Um, because I guess just as a mom, um, and I, I'm not going to sit here and act like, I don't know that there's like an inherent, um, uh, bond or, or mother motherness for lack of a proper or better word that, that moms have in terms of like their children's needs, um, that exists because it does. And I, I know it because I, I experienced that with my mom. My mom just always knew like when something was wrong, she knew if I made a noise upstairs, but it's not the noise that she's used to hearing. If she needed to come up the stairs and, and see what I was getting into, like moms just, they just have that, that, um, Intuition. Intuition. So uh, I, I just, I remember when I read that quote, her saying like, it's okay. I have to remind myself that it's okay that I can't do everything or shouldn't do everything. Um, that just kind of like, I could, I could close my eyes and I could visualize you saying that because, um, you know, you do, I think even if it weren't a pandemic, you would just try to take everything on because that's just your, your personality like you just tried to do everything like you're even when we're both home on weekends, you're like, Oh, I got to get, I got to get this clean. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. And I did want to kind of want you to speak on like culturally how you approach this topic, because I do know that that plays a role in your, your mindset and why you feel like certain things just default to, uh, you know, falling on your plate. Um, so that was, that was one thing. Um, and just, just for me, uh, I, I don't want to get, I never want to get into this thing where, you know, especially as, as partners, as parents, you know, we're doing this thing with well, who's, who's got the heavier load or who's, 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 you know, juggling the most responsibility, who's bearing the most on their back because ultimately everybody's experience is, is different. And just because, um, you know, I work and, you know, at, at one point in time you weren't doesn't mean that my job is automatically, 
you know, I, I have the, the high authority just because I'm the one working and you're not necessarily bringing any income in and vice versa. Um, and just because you're the one who spends the most time with the kids doesn't mean that I have like you no know, say so as their dad because I'm upstairs working all day. So I think one thing that's really important just as couples and one thing that I've realized where we've kind of fallen short and, and I'll say, and I'll, I'll take the blame for it is that, um, if, you know, in any, in any, like in any merge, like business merger, when companies come together, they like define like what the structure is going to be, you know, who's going to report to who, what, what departments get absorbed, you know, what new positions get created. There's like an outline, there's a plan put forth. So I think, you know, the pandemic obviously caught everybody off guard. Kids come home, parents come home, everybody's at home. And I think one thing we didn't do is just outline and it seems so elementary, but it's just like, all right, who's going to take care of what? Like, okay, this is what you're going to do. And maybe you break it down by day. Maybe you break it down by week. Maybe you break it down. I don't know. However you do it, whatever works best for everybody's unique situation. But that's something we didn't do. We just kind of just rolled with it. And I think, um, you know, we got into rolling, we got rolling and you were just, you know, you were like, you're like that gift, you know, the guy, the, the gift of the guy who's like trying to wash his car and he's got like all the things and he's like fumbling and you just started trying to juggle everything. Um, and I was transitioning to a new job um, and I was trying to learn how to do that. And I'm the meet, my first time being a manager. So it was meetings, 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 meetings. Um, and then, you know, that, that takes a toll. And then you come downstairs and you're used to, you know, just being able to relax. But no, you know, you've got kids, you've got a wife, you've got things that need to get done. So I think uh, one thing you said about me that's absolutely correct and that I am I am spoiled and I am a last born so if I see somebody saying, you know, I'll, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. My natural inclination, my natural instinct is to be like, okay, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Go ahead with your bad self. Go ahead and take care of that. Um, and that's where I just need to be better. And I need to realize that just because Jessica says she'll do something, one, doesn't mean that she wants to do it. And two, doesn't mean that she's happy about doing it. And three, it more than likely means that she's frustrated because she knows I won't do it. So that was part of, that was actually part of our conversation the other day where she was just like, I need you to just, just do it. It doesn't, it doesn't always have to be, you know, it's in like, it just doesn't always have to be like a last minute thing. Like just do it. And that's fair. Absolutely. 100%. Um, so I think husbands in general, not to, not to generalize all husbands because not all husbands struggle with this. Um, and, uh, you know, some couples, they just, They've, they've put their game plan together and they, and they work it. And then everybody's, you know, the, the pandemic causes stress on everybody, but for the most part, you know, they, they work it out. Um, I would just say it's, it's important, you know, just to, just to be, you know, don't be oblivious. And, and just because your wife is doing something um, and just because the kids naturally gravitate toward a mom uh, doesn't mean that you, you know, can't give her some relief. Like I was, I first got hip to the article. I said, got hip. Wow. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I got, uh, I found the article on Twitter and in the, in the comments of the article, there was this mom saying like she had a husband who, after she had a baby, she went back to work. Everybody was at home. He would take the baby out during the middle of the day and just drive around. So the baby would fall asleep so that she could get, she could get a release. And she said he would go to Dairy Queen and buy her favorite smoothie, drive back around, <laughs> like text her that he's out front, handing the smoothie, and then keep circling uh, so that the baby would stay asleep. Like some some dudes just automatically, you know, they they have it. You know, they 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 know what needs to be done and, and they do it. Some need a little encouragement. Um, some just need to be spoken to a couple of times and, and then it'll click. So I probably fall into that, that third category. But... Uh, One thing that's just really important is that no matter what you're doing, like, so as a husband, I'm the one, I'm the primary, I'm the breadwinner, I guess you would say, although I kind of hate that term. Um, But just be, no matter how many jobs I'm working, uh, because one of the husbands in the story, he was working three, doesn't mean that you like, just because you're working three jobs, you get to just automatically clock out when, when the day is done because, you know, you signed up to whether intentionally or unintentionally you have kids so you know and they don't you working three jobs means nothing to them mm-hmm. like they don't they, they don't grasp they don't know what that means they don't care they don't care <laughs> so you know you still gotta you still gotta lock in and 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 be there and be present so 
like if that's you in that situation, you know, you're the breadwinner, you're working all day long, you're in office, you're in meetings. Yeah, I know it's a drag, but you still got to, you know, you still got to be there and be present um, because it's not easy dealing with one kid, two kids, however many kids. Um, and it's hard on them too. being home. If your kids are at home, our kids have been at home since, you know, since January. It's it's hard. It's hard on everybody. So, you know, just as as a dad who realizes that that he's kind of fallen short and is can afford to pick up the slack a little bit. It's kind of com- imploring anybody else out there if they're seeing this and they're realizing that, you know, they, they can afford to be a little bit better. Um, just just do so. And part of that is just having open, honest conversations with your wife or your partner, excuse me, um, and letting them tell you about yourself. Probably the toughest thing, that one of the toughest things you'll ever have to go through, just sit there and just take it, take shot after shot after shot, uh, but you'll be better for it. So, um, yeah, but talk about, uh, talk about uh, before we, we get out of here, cause then we're over a little bit over an hour, uh, just talk a little bit about your culture mm-hmm. and the role of women in the house and, 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 in your culture and how you were raised and talk about what it's been like for you to kind of transition from that to just like almost strictly an American household, but mm-hmm. still, you know, the background, yeah, sorry, that background. Um, the Ghanaian culture is very interesting. So I'll, I'll have to kind of hybrid speak on the first generation experience that I've had, but also the experience of my parents that I grew up hearing about. So one shout out to Ghana. Ghana has the most, female owned businesses in the world. So as in women, they're like the most women entrepreneurs in the world. So that's the experience I know. So, you know, my, like every story I heard about my maternal grandmother, um, about her raising my, my mom and her siblings, you know, she, she was a go-getter. She was a hustler. Um, she was a single mom. She, you know, raised them. She made the money so that most, a majority of them went to private school. Um, they were, you know, provided for. She like would. She was always selling something in the market. Like she was, she was a merchant for the most part. Um, but the uh, the structure of the household is very different in Ghana than it is in America. There's a lot more support. We as an American culture are very isolated. So. You know, there's always someone who, like my my mom's family, they were in the city. So there was always someone who wanted their child to get a better education. So it's like, you'll go live with your aunt. Or you'll go live with my cousin so that you can help them around their house. And with that, go and get a better education because you're you have access to a better school system. So everything doesn't rely on mom as it does in the American system where, you know, here it's mom, it's like mom, dad, children. So everything domestic happens, like mom takes care of it. Whereas you have like my, my mom happens to be the youngest of, it was originally nine, but she's the youngest of seven. So there's always someone to do work. It growing up, my like my dad is very passionate about cooking so you know there was for the most part of my life my dad was the breadwinner he worked um but i was like i always remember that when he came home like my dad did, wasn't the type like come home from work i'm going to sit on the couch grab a beer and watch like a game on tv no i remember he'd be play like on the floor playing with me like playing with my brother like like active it was it was never just like oh daddy's home and he's got to like do his own thing he just beer 30 he didn't there was no beer 30 he was like he was in it he was involved um very just so that's what i'm used to like that's something that i credit my dad and my dad didn't work like office jobs he worked laborous jobs so these are jobs where he's you know doing heavy labor driving large vehicles for hours at a time coming home you know he's been out in the cold whatever because we grew up in massachusetts whatever the elements were coming home changing real quick and then coming to play and I don't even remember what my mom was doing. Like she was, pro- she was probably cooking or making dinner. Um, but like that's how distinct it was. Like it, he stepped in, and it was just like clocking out of work, clocking into to family role. So that's that's the dynamic I was used to in my particular unit. Um, you know, my dad 
is a great cook and he cooked a lot when we were growing up he still cooks um so you know he like weekends he was cooking he like he was just very very much so he cooked he played he ain't the great he was not the greatest cleaner like he cleaned stuff and then my mom would have to go back and clean it herself and then she'd kind of get upset and be like I'd rather you didn't do it. Sometimes, like, the dishes that David doesn't put in the dishwasher, I have to go back later and clean because they still have, like, oily residue. But I don't say anything because I appreciate that he did the dishes. Um, but now I said it, so maybe. So while we're just talking about doing dishes, the fact that when Jessica loads the dishwasher, there's always, like, 30% of the dishes that are still have gunk and stuff on them. So we can do that. We can. You but want, part of wanna, the reason why that happens is because I usually have nah. like five minutes to load nah. the dishwasher before Sovereign comes over, yeah. tries to grab knives. She just can't load the dishwasher because it's, it's been like that ever since we've been together. She's I can, struggled I to load the dishwasher. I have bad dishwashers. Maybe you should buy me a better dishwasher. No. You buy me these cheap crap First ass. of all, this dishwasher came with the house. So exactly. You better, and that's the dishwasher you're going to get. So it, the dishwasher, we should have, we should have picked a better option. Um, but if I had more time, I would be fine washing dishes by hand. Right. Cause when I we were, up, when we I, were just, when no. I grew up, th- when we finally got a dishwasher, I think I was Don't 13 let, and you know what the dishwasher look, was? It was the dish strainer. So that's look, just, you put the clean dishes that you wash by hand look, into the dishwasher have, to dry. I have sat here and I have let you berate you berate you with I let you have free reign but I will not let you sit here and act like you were the perfect I'm not saying I'm perfect nah, if know, I wash something by hand then you should call out then you should call out your inefficiencies too but if too. I wash it by hand it's clean you know why nah. because Tina my mom Tina she made sure to teach me to wash a dish and get it clean yeah, that's but great anyway you still can't um, load a dishwasher so you're like there was a point like when my dad went full time into the ministry there was a, f- a point when my mom was in real estate, so she was she was essentially the ma- I'll say majority breadwinner. But even so, their partnership was always good. Like, they just had a good syncness in terms of like who does what um, in the house. I think syncness is a word. I said it, so it is. <laughs> it's not how it works. Yes, go, go yes, ahead. it is. Go ahead. So. Um, culturally i don't and again i was a kid so you know kids don't always notice things um so culturally i wasn't really exposed to i i just feel like everything was balanced in our in our house um you know my dad cleaned my dad cooked um my dad bathed us to create like he did whatever needed to be done for us um but I, I can't speak for my mom in terms of like, was he onto it? Because there are some things he would do that, you know, I definitely hear my mom be like, look, it's just easier if I do it because I'll have to walk you through it or you're just not going to do it the way I want it done. Like in terms of cleaning, sanitation, like like the difference between David and I and, and our cleaning, David can clean so that it appears clean. It You look at it and it's clean. But when I clean, I want to know that it's been bleached and sterilized and sanitized and all of that. And that's, that's a disconnect with us. So it's like, if I'm going to do something, it's going to take me twice as long because I have to take that extra step so that I'm comfortable knowing that things are clean. Whereas he is cleaning so that when you look at it, it looks clean and he does a damn good job. When David cleans, like it's clean, but I know that it's not sterilized if that makes sense but this is your episode to just take your but take when your i shots, think about so the stories i heard i, I appreciate of, the backhand compliment though. when i when i think about the stories from my paternal side so like my dad's parents you know my fa- my grandfather was um a police superintendent um he you know he was but my 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 grandmother um elizabeth who are all all the girls are named after and myself um she is very she's she was like she kept everything in order in the house but she also sold stuff she also was a merchant herself that like if you any for the most part if you talk to any ghanaian person their mother grandmother that's in ghana like was also a merchant they were selling fabric they were selling food of some type that's just what they do but because they have the support system of either many kids or their nieces their nephews like my parents 
I grew up with my mom calling her mother auntie. My dad to the like they call my grandma. Like all of us call they all call their mothers auntie because their nieces and nephews were in the house with them. So you're growing up and you're hearing people call your mom auntie. So you assume that that's what you call her. So that so like I remember being a kid and be like, why do you call grandma auntie mom? And she's like, well, because everybody called her that because all of my cousins, you know, cousins lived with us and friends, like they lived with us. So that's what they referred to us. So we refer. So I don't know. I think that that's, it's weird, but it makes sense to me. So they have support system. You have people who are helping cook. You have people who are helping clean. You have people who are helping rearing the children. So, you know, Americans say it takes a village, but they really don't apply that to how our structure of the home is like, Africans, and I'm sure, you know, other countries do this as well, but the way we live as a big unit really implements the, it takes a village because it is an entire village helping you. When my, like my mom tells stories of when her oldest sister, I think she was 10 when her first niece was born and they lived in the same compound. So, you know, they'd say she, somebody would call her and they would put the baby on her back and tie her with a cloth. And while she's sweeping, you know, she's got her niece on her back. And that, that act is giving, you know, her mother or her sister relief to do something else, which is giving my grandmother relief to do something else. But here, everything that has to be done in the house falls on me because there's no other, there's no person. I'm not going to put Savi on Salas's back. They'll, she'll break her. Um, so it's, it's very, and, and the beauty of Ghanaian women is they're very assertive. So there's no need to necessarily ask. And that's like, whenever we have a family, like if unfortunately there's a funeral or someone's birthday party or something where all of my mom's sisters get together, they're like, ants they just know what to do no one's asking oh do you need me to do this oh can i do this it's just everyone kind of just falls in line and gets and it gets done so that's something i struggle with and makes me not good at asking for help because i know that what i'm used to is people just you know showing up and doing things um if things need to be done, it just gets done. So it's definitely a culture, a, a dynamic culture shock, the American system for me, which is weird to say, considering I am an American and I grew up in that system. But like, you know, my grandmother lived with us for short windows of time. Um, so she was around and she was helping cook and she was helping clean and she was helping take care of us. Um, so it, it almost seems like and again, I can't speak for my mom. I was a kid and, and kid vision is very different from the actual experience of everyone else. But I don't know that my mom actually ever like kind of struggled with, I feel like I'm carrying everything or I'm doing everything to keep this house afloat because every our culture, everything is so unified now there are some Ghanaian men who are lazy and they don't do nothing like my mom lucked out with my dad he's very he was very like hands-on like because the story I was told my grandfather and my grandmother were arranged and it was because he went to open a can of corned beef and cut his finger and he was like I need a wife and and, and they got him my they got him my grandmother and they were married for what like 60 years um he passed about three years ago so you know their their story is 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 cute and different but like he was he was still very involved i mean he i he doesn't he didn't cook to my knowledge but he was still very much so he came home from work and engaged and interacted with his kids and helped with the household where he could um but i think a lot of that comes to your love for your partner um in terms of like is it love? Is it in love? Is it romantic love? And I know he had an ador an adoration for my grandmother. Um, so that reflected in how he, you know, tried. But again, I wasn't there. So I don't know. I'm pretty sure she had moments where she was like, bruh, I'm gonna need you to do something. Um, there's a story where he I heard he she was like losing it with my uncle. And he picked up my uncle and dropped him in a barrel of water. Like that was his way of disciplining him because she was nagging so much. Um, but uh, just a random story that makes me smile on the inside. Oh, it's nice for you to finally start telling some story. I can't. I can't always be the one telling 
telling stories. stories. From my, these are other people's stories, childhood. so I'm probably telling them wrong. So, I was like, one of my uncle, uncles or aunts are going to come for me and be like, that's, that's not it. But, okay. um, but yeah, so, you know, I think that plays a role in it too. But, you know, the, the dynamic of the Ghanaian culture is very different from America. And I think the American culture can be very isolating. And I think that contributes to postpartum depression and mommy blues to an extent um because you you you're you have to do everything by yourself that's just how it's designed and the pandemic only emphasized this because you're limited to the people you can be around and it's always the same people and there's nowhere to go i told david that when we were talking the other day, I had moments where I was like, I just wanted to run away. But it's like, to where? We're in a global pandemic. Like, I'd have to quarantine and then run away and then quarantine to come back. So um, you can't do that. But, you know, it's it's part of life, I guess. Um, and it's part of just, you know, probably the Eve curse. You know, it's probably part of it. God was like, oh, you eat fruit? Now you're just going to you're gonna have to you have to handle everything. Like, that's that's on you. So... I definitely, I know I was, I felt the type of way when you told me, like, I get it. And I was like, bro, we've been married almost seven years. We're on our second kid. We've been doing this parent thing for almost six years. And it took uh, this and, article and to that's get why, it. And that's, that's where I want to, I do want to um, push back a little bit. And then I, unfortunately, I think we need to wrap because okay. we're, we're at time. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's like, okay, like you should have gotten it immediately. Like that would be great. And in any situation that's what's most ideal uh but it doesn't always work like that so I, I think what's what's important one is that you're someone who can act that you be someone who can actually get things like be able to receive perspective not necessarily just from your partner but from a um, you know you know outside third party uh sources as such as i did um but i think is what's most important is that you you get it at all and that you're capable of getting it at all um so yeah i mean i I, I get it. It would be it would would have been marvelous if I just the, as soon as Hollis was here, I was like, you know what? I know what I need to do, <laughs> but it didn't happen. But I get it now, and you know. But but the good thing about now, no, saying I know it now and saying it publicly and like on the internet is that you know I have to be held accountable to that. So I can't say I can't I, I can't know. I can't relapse. So I think that's 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 a benefit in that respect. So um, I think we're going to wrap. If you would like to hear more of Jessica's Ghanaian stories, um, please leave a comment saying so or leave a note to, for us on social media and we will arrange a FaceTime <laughs> for you all maybe to connect. Maybe we'll do an episode maybe, where I just talk about yeah, our maybe, trip. Maybe we'll, we'll do that. But um, just to wrap up, follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook. I got the stuff popping up down here below. Be sure to subscribe. We are at like 46 YouTube subscribers, not complaining, just feel like we could do a little bit better. So uh, if you're watching this, be sure to subscribe, share it with a friend, be sure to like it as well. That'll actually help it show up in the YouTube algorithm as well. Um, really exciting news. Uh, I think uh, we can go ahead and say now March is going to be our mompreneur month. Yeah. So we are going to introduce our, our first guests on Rush Vibes and they're all going to be dope ass moms who are about their business and i can't wait to have uh them on we're uh collecting the roster of i don't say roster i feel like mitt romney um we're collecting the uh our our our, <laughs> our, our talented uh our guests to uh to appear uh, on on the podcast so uh, really excited about that because we get to do some production stuff that we haven't yet done so that's really exciting mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, we just love everybody. We, we appreciate everybody who's been tuning in, been giving us feedback, been interacting with us. Um, we're, we're eternally grateful. Um, I did not put the picture up of our of our holiday tree, which is now themed in Valentine's Day decor, but we will put that up on social media um, for you all to, to see and probably roll your eyes and laugh at. A lot of people have appreciated it. So um, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. But once again, thanks for tuning in. I am Dave. I'm Jess. This is Rush Vibes. We are still in the pandemic, even though the vaccine and the new STEMI is on the way. Wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, and as always, be safe. We love you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.